All right, hey there students. In today's video, we're we'll going through five break even point practice problems. These will be similar to your exams, so it's good to go practice each one of them as if you were taking an exam. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. Let's get into it. Okay, first question at the break even point, what happens? Well, to do this problem, we need to know more about the break even point. The break even point is basically when a company's revenues equal their costs. So we can say it as revenues equal costs. It's what they need to break even. Now, I do have another uh, video on the break even point. I'm going to go ahead and put it up here in a card somewhere and go check it out. This is more about practicing problems to get you prepared for exams and just understanding accounting in general. So revenues must equal costs. Now here with um, the break even point, we have to do a formula. So the formula is this revenue minus variable costs equals contribution margin minus fixed costs equals, we'll just call it net income for this example. So that's the main formula here. This is more about an internal, um, more of like an internal income statement uh, formula. Now we have to figure out what it, which ones actually fit here. So revenues equal variable costs. Well, that's not exactly correct because if you think about it, we're looking to get actually our all our revenues equals our costs. So if you look at this here, we'll go through it. So revenues have to subtract out variable costs first. And that's going to equal our margin. We call it margin contribution margin. So what we can do is actually get rid of this side. We can just start with margin. Margin minus fixed costs equals net income. But if you, if you really move this around, at the very end of the day, if our margins equal our fixed costs, that's break even. Now we're not looking for net income here because income is the extra amount you get. We're looking to basically meet equal our margins, equal our costs, which basically comes out to be zero in net income, zero. That's break even. So really what we need to do is have our margins equal our fixed costs. So right now, revenue equals variable costs is wrong. Sales equals fixed costs, that is wrong. Total fixed costs equals total variable costs. No, that makes no sense. Contribution margin equals fixed costs, which is what we have here. And this will make more sense as we practice more problems. This is more of a conceptual problem. Let's go ahead and actually practice with some numbers. Okay, next problem here. So this is asking what is the sales volume needed to break even? When they mean volume, they're looking for dollars. So how much revenue must be sold to break even? So to figure this out, we have to do a formula. And that's gonna be your fixed costs divided by what we call your contribution margin percentage. Contribution margin percentage. And this is actually its own formula. So we'll plug that in down here. So it's actually going to be your sales percentage minus your variable cost percentage equals contribution margin percentage. Now sales is always 100. It's very important to know. Sales is always 100%. Subtract our variable cost. Well, it gives us the ratio is 70%. So we plug that in. And that's going to equal 30% as our contribution margin percentage. So we just plug that in up here. Pretty easy. Fixed costs. Excuse me. Fixed costs go on top there. That's going to be 600000 Let's go ahead and divide that out here. 600000 divided by 0.3. So $2 million. I'll just put 2M. There we are, letter C, two million. So that's basically the number or the volume of sales or the amount of sales you must sell 
to break even where your costs equal your revenue and you're done. Break even is when your costs equal your revenues. You don't have any extra because if you had extra, that's income. So that's how you calculate that problem there. Okay, so this is a conceptual problem. So it's saying if variable costs per unit decrease, sales volume at break even point will. And it gives you some options. So what will it do? Now this is pretty tricky. We gotta figure out what would happen if one thing affects the other. So what we're gonna do here actually is gonna be the best way. Let's add some numbers to it. Let's call variable costs per unit. We'll just call it $10, okay? And let's call sales, this is per unit by the way. We'll call sales, and this is variable costs. We'll call sales, I don't know, 20. Okay, and this is your sales. So if you subtract these two, and I'll just do it down here to make it easy, 20 minus 10. That's your margin, remember your contribution margin. We'll call it this $10, that's contribution margin. Now, it's saying if variable cost per unit decrease, so going down, what happens to sales at break even point? Well, let's go ahead and get the sales volume at break even point. Remember the formula is fixed costs over contribution margin percentage. So let's go ahead and get the percentage here as we would. So you have 10 divided by 20. Remember it's contribution margin over sales. So that's pretty easy, 50%, right? And we'll call fixed costs, let's call it 100 grand. Again, these are just made up numbers, but you'll see these types of problems. You have to kind of make up your own numbers for it to make sense. Let's just go ahead and get that number here. So $100,000 divided by 50%, 200K. Okay, so that's using the constant. Now, we're gonna say it decreases, that's what it says. So let's go ahead and just literally, we're gonna, just gonna create a new problem, but with it decreasing, sales stay the same. So let's call it 20 for sales. Let's call it, instead of 10 now, let's call it eight, it goes down. What's that gonna equal? Well, your contribution margin is now 12, it went up. So what would be your percentage now? Well, 12 divided by the 20 for sales. So what happens there? 12 divided by 20, and we get 60%. So it actually, the percentage went up. Now what happens with the formula? Well, fixed cost divided by CM percentage, 100K, use the same number as before. We now update the percentage. It was 50, now it's 60. So what happened to the sales at break even point? It went down. Now it's 166, 6, 6, 7. So if variable cost per unit decreases, sales volume at break even will decrease. You see how we did that? That's really important. You'll see problems like this on your exams where there's no numbers. And a lot of my students freak out. They're just like, what do I do? Like, what do I do? Like, there's no numbers. How do I figure it out? Make it up, make up numbers. You see how I just created basic numbers and did a scenario that fit the problem, worked it out, and I got to the right answer. So hopefully that was helpful, very important problem. Okay, next problem here. So it's asking what is the contribution margin ratio? Contribution margin. Well, we know contribution margin is sales minus variable costs. That is your margin. Then you take your margin divided by sales, and that is your ratio. Percentage, ratio, same thing. Same thing. So let's plug it in. So we know our selling price per unit is gonna be $200, and our variable cost is 75. I'll just do it up here. 200, right, minus the 75. We get 125 contribution margin. We take that margin, divided by sales. That's your margin ratio or margin percentage. 62.5%, letter C. Not too bad. If you know the formulas, 
you're good. But you have to know the formulas. That's one of the most important parts of this chapter. Okay, last problem here. What is the break-even point in units? Units, so not sales volume. We did sales volume earlier. Now we're doing units, different formula. All you do is take your fixed costs divided by contribution margin. That's it, margin. And that's in units, okay? So it's, we call it contribution margin per unit, per unit. So go ahead and plug it in here. Let's just plug in our numbers. Well, first off, we gotta get our contribution margin per unit. We know our selling price is 200. So we're gonna go ahead and do the math. Minus 75, 125. So we have our contribution margin per unit. Now we plug in our fixed costs. 765,500. Let's go ahead and do the math on that. 765,500 divided by 125. And we got 6124, which is, again, the closest number is 6120. Let me just make sure I did that right. I had seven, six, five, 500 divided by 125. Yeah, so the closest answer is gonna be 6120, and that is your best option. Again, a lot of formulas in this one, so make sure you rewind it if you need to. Please like and subscribe. It really helps support the channel. I can make more videos. So until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.